Hello and welcome back to Alice Talks Football and today's video is 5 things we learned from Manchester United 1, Chelsea 3 and I'm really not happy, I'm really not happy, it's not the result that's made me unhappy, it's the performance, you know if we'd lost 3-1 and we played well I would be less angry, less annoyed, less disappointed but we played awfully and full credit to Chelsea, they were brilliant, they deserved the win, they were the much better team, they, Solskjaer was tactically outclassed by Lampard, Lampard finally gets his win over Solskjaer and progresses to the FA Cup semi-final, I mean progresses to the FA Cup final in which I think that Chelsea will be Arsenal and Chelsea deserved to win the game because Manchester United were awful, Chelsea were really good, my man of the match was Kovacic, I thought Kovacic was amazing today, a few people saying oh we should have got a yellow card, yeah we probably should have got a yellow card, yeah the ref's decisions went against us a bit, maybe influenced by that comment by Lampard, but at the end of the day Chelsea were the better team, Chelsea deserved to win and today's video is 5 things we learned from Manchester United 1, Chelsea 3, so hit that like button, subscribe down below and let's get into my post match thoughts as a Manchester United fan and I, yeah now the first thing is can Manchester United not pass the ball it's football one of the basic skills in football is passing the ball and today we could not pass I generally think there's never been a game where I've seen more sloppy misplaced pass passes from Manchester United it's not about the result for me it's about the performance of course I'd like to win but even if we did somehow win that game the performance was absolutely awful from Manchester United. The passing, there was no tempo, there was just no accuracy, there was just nothing to it. I swear we misplaced about 100 passes. We gave the ball away so much. It was actually embarrassing. Passing is the simplest skill in football and we could not pass today. We, we misplaced so many passes all around the pitch. At the back, we gave the ball away to them way too many times. Overdid some passes. The Brandon Williams pass caused the second goal. Just today Manchester United were awful from the get-go. It's not even like we had a five minute spell where we looked good. We were awful from the get-go. We were sloppy. We had no tempo. We couldn't get a rhythm of passes going. At the end of the day, yes, Chelsea probably would have won anyway, but it was the mistakes that cost us. David De Gea should have saved the first two goals, in my opinion. Some people say he should have even got to the third. Realistically, David De Gea on his day could have saved all three of those goals. But David De Gea was absolutely awful today and it really frustrates me because he's such a good keeper but I'm at the point where we're paying him so much and he's been making these mistakes for so long. And do I think Dean Henderson is better? No, but I feel like we need to have Dean Henderson in. I think Dean Henderson wants to come to Manchester United. He wants to be first choice to keeper. He's had the experience in the Premier League. He's not going to cost us anything wage-wise. I, I think I'm actually at the point where I've had enough of David De Gea. He was amazing last week. And I've always backed David De Gea, but this performance was David De Gea's worst performance. And I do think maybe Manchester United need to get away from David De Gea when they've got Dean Henderson there. You know, has this been too many chances for De Gea? Are we paying him too much to make too many mistakes? And I think the passing was awful, but another problem from Manchester United was we were making too many mistakes. Chelsea playing well caused us to make those mistakes, but it was just sloppy, there was no tempo, and there was way too many mistakes from Manchester United today. Okay, the second thing, and it's the only thing that isn't really negative in this video, and I don't think anyone played well today. I think there are a lot of really poor performances, and by Bruno Fernandes' standards, he was really poor today, but I think Bruno Fernandes and Martial, and maybe Greenwood, because Greenwood just came on, he, he didn't really do much, but I think they're the only three players that can come off the pitch and be like, I wasn't awful. I think they all think. I think they all know they could have played better. I think for Bruno Fernandes, the standard that was a poor game. But Bruno Fernandes was the only player making things happen, especially in the first half. Bruno Fernandes he misplaced a lot of passes, but the amount of final third passes Bruno Fernandes completed, the amount of things he was trying to do, but the players around him weren't doing it. And it was. I don't think Bruno Fernandes had his best game, but I thought the players around him were letting him down. You know, Bruno Fernandes he played in Dan James twice. You know, he nearly played in a Galo, he, he played in Rashford, he nearly played in Rashford. I think no player completed more final third passes than Bruno Fernandes. He completed nine more than any other Manchester United player and six more than any other Chelsea player. And I don't think, for Bruno Fernandes' standards, I don't think he was good, but I don't think he was awful. He was, it was a bang average performance, but, it, but he was the only player on that pitch actually doing something going forward. We didn't create anything going forward. We maybe had maybe two shots on target and it was kind of out of nothing. The only thing that happened going forward was three balls that Bruno Fernandes tried to create. And, you know, he couldn't quite reach Dan James. He couldn't quite reach Rashford. And a lot of that was to do with the structure and organisation of Chelsea's defence. But I think Bruno Fernandes, I'm not, I'm not saying he played well, 
but he's one of the only players in that performance that could come out and be like, well, I tried to make things happen. Because when he gets on the ball, he does try and make things happen, but nothing happened today. We didn't create enough. It's not just how poor we were at the back, but Manchester United, they did not create enough today. The third thing we learned is the importance of Luke Shaw and that our defence is not good enough. I thought today we were a mess defensively. I actually think that's the worst defensive spate I've seen under Manchester United. I think... I love Brandon Williams, he did not have a good game, I'm not going to go into Brandon Williams because he's a young boy, he's barely played since the restart, he's been thrown in at an FA Cup semi-final against Chelsea, okay, I'm not going to go into Brandon Williams, he's also in, yeah, carrying a bit of an injury, but I think that today showed the importance of Luke Shaw, and Luke Shaw is a very criticised player, but I think Luke Shaw gets really over criticised, I think going forward Luke Shaw's improved his game massively, but also defensively Luke Shaw has that stability, I think Luke Shaw's quite a good left back defensively, and I think today once again proved that, you know, Luke Shaw is an important player and that we do need another centre-back. I, I, I think Lindelof and Maguire have put in some pretty good performances, but today they were shambolic and I think it shows they don't work together. They're both slow. I think, you know, Maguire's a physical centre-back. We need a quick centre-back to go next to them. They're both slow. They don't quite work together, you know. They could form a partnership with another player, but I just thought Lindelof and Maguire, they did not work together. I thought Wan-Bissaka was poor. I thought... Williams or Paul, but I think today we've learned that, you know, Luke Shaw is an important player, we need Luke Shaw, but we also need another centre-back. The fourth thing we learned is that Lampard tactically outdone Solskjaer. We both came up with five at the back system, and I was thinking, you know, we've been playing so well, we've got all this talent on the pitch, why are we going to go and counter-attack Chelsea again, sit back and counter-attack when we've been playing this nice free-flowing attacking football? And I think Lampard expected that, so he was like, I'm going to do the same, I'm going to play five at the back and shut you out, because I know that that's what you're going to do. And Lampard completely tactically outclassed us. And the other thing that makes me worry is Chelsea were pressing us high. Crystal Palace pressed us high. Southampton pressed us high. Are we starting to be worked out? Because when we're being pressed high, we're making more mistakes. And today we made loads of mistakes. When we're being pressed high and players are running us and shutting us down quickly, we can't move the ball very fast from mid field to attack from defence to midfield to attack. We can't move the ball at all from defence to midfield to attack and we like to play out from the back when we're being pressed like this. Our team's working us out. That is one of the big things that I am worried about because I feel like we've been tactically outclassed by Solskjaer. I feel like Hodgson set up well against us. You know, I think Southampton that tactically outdid us. Are we being caught out? Are teams realising if we do this high press on Manchester United, they can't move the ball forward? The fifth and final thing we learn is there is a massive drop off from our first 11. Now, when our first 11 were all on playing together, I don't think we played particularly well. So I did write this point sort of down in the first half. But it does show that we do need at least four signings. You know, there was talk of us, uh, can we challenge with City and Liverpool? And I think we've learned that we have a good first 11, but they're going to be tired. They can't do it week in, week out. I think a lot of the players on there were tired, but that doesn't explain the poor performances of Fred or Brandon Williams. But I think it explains that we do need at least four signings if we actually want to be anywhere near City and Liverpool because we're going to be playing three games a week. We're going to have in injuries. We're going to have rotation. And we know that... Once one player comes out of our main starting eleven, I mean Luke Shaw, for example, we instantly don't look as good. And I think from this, I've learned that Manchester United need to sign Jadon Sancho because we need another attacker that adds something. We need to sign a Donny van der Beek or a Jack Grealish. Should we have another creative midfielder that needs something? We need to sign a Wilfred Ndidi because he's a holding CDM. He's young. I think Matic is good, but we've got no other CDM other than Matic. Wilfred Ndidi has that energy that I feel like we're lacking. He's he's a tackler CDM. He can help shield the defence, giving Pogba and Bruno the ability to go forward. And we need another centre-back, a quick centre-back that can slot in next to Lindelof or Maguire. And I think it's really proved that, you know, things aren't perfect for Manchester United. We need another good four signings. I was also really disappointed about playing a back five, and I hope we never play a back five again. I think the reason we lost is because we started with a back five. And for me, we need to play four at the back. 4-3-3, counter-attacking football, we need to get an Ndidi and we need to get Sancho and maybe a Van der Beek and another centre-back. That's what I think Manchester United need to do, but that's five things we learnt versus Chelsea. I'm not happy with the result. I'm not happy with the performance more than the result, but please hit that like button, subscribe down below, share this video and comment down below in the comment section your thoughts on the game. I'll try and reply to as many comments as I can. See you next time.